Good morning. Today we are gathered together to celebrate the 152nd anniversary of Christian ministry here at St. James Presbyterian Church, Forest, Ontario. In the last 152 years, there have been two world wars, the Great Depression, two long reigning queens and four kings, 23 prime ministers, the invention of the radio, the television, the television, the telephone and computers, residential schools, flushing toilets and wa running water have been installed in, house, in all the houses in forest. The automobile has replaced horses as the most common mode of transportation. Women were given the vote. Human beings have gone to space and walked on the moon. Japanese citizens on the west coast of Canada were interred. The Presbyterian Church in Canada was legislated into being by our national government. Ministry changed from being a male-only profession to being open to both sexes. And this building was built. The world that we know today was not the world that the people who built this building knew. I doubt that they would even recognize our world, much less what happens in this church. But through it all, there has been one God, one Lord, one Savior of us all. The fundamental pr principles for which our forebears built this building still exist. To glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. To this same Lord, we raise our songs of thanksgiving and praise on this anniversary Sunday. Let's pray. Beloved, adored, divine one, thank you that we are celebrating this church anniversary. We thank you that we are all one in Christ and pray that as members of your body, your Holy Spirit will knit us together in the bonds of unity and love. Lord, you have promised that you are the one that would build your church, and we ask that you would continue to equip each one of us, both individually and corporately, with the talents and gifts that may be used in your praise and your service to glorify and edify the rest of the saints of God. Protect us from the wiles of the enemy who seeks to destroy and cause divisions among your body. Help us to be sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, and gentle towards one another. Let us not be motivated by selfishness, but in humility may we seek to regard the needs and necessities of others before ourselves. Give wisdom to the elders, managers, and ministers who serve this congregation. Give wisdom to those that teach, and a teachable spirit to those who come to listen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Holy Father, and the fellowship of the Spirit be with us this day and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is from Mark's Gospel in Mark chapter 8 reading verses 22 to 26. When they arrived at Bethsaida, some people brought a blind man to Jesus and they begged him to touch the man and heal him. Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. Then spitting on the man's eyes, he laid his hands on him and asked, can you see anything now? The man looked around him Yes, he said, I see people, but I can't see them very clearly. They look like trees walking around. Then Jesus placed his hands on the man's eyes again, and his eyes were opened. 
His sight was completely restored and he could see everything clearly. Jesus sent him away saying, don't go back to your village on your way home. This fall, we are examining the stories of Jesus and what they have to say to us in the 21st century. I, for one, need to hear the stories of Jesus because they remind me about some of the very simple truths of our faith, truths that we need very badly to hear in these pandemic days. Today's story speaks really powerfully to me. As some of you know, when my father was a quite a bit younger than I am now, he was legally blind. He struggled with his failing vision and eventual blindness for many years. He did not adapt well or learn to live easily with his handicap. In this day and age, though, technology has contributed so much to people with impaired vision or blindness that it's almost not considered a handicap anymore. There are many new ways of seeing. This is true in a metaphorical sense as well as in a, a, in a uh, physical sense. Sometimes we are blind to certain things in life and we need to acquire a new way of seeing. Once, women could not be ministers. 55 years ago, it took a new way of seeing the world, a new vision for the church to make the necessary changes in our church structure so that it would be possible. The pandemic has forced us to see a lot of things in new ways, hasn't it? School, work, our homes, e even our families are being seriously impacted by our new way of seeing them. And it's hard to know if we're getting it right, isn't it? At times like this, we need to stop everything Stop hurrying, stop second-guessing ourselves, stop worrying, and allow God to take the lead. We will know when we are getting it right. Right now, we are feeling flooded. Feeling flooded with information. Flooded with the news of the day. Flooded with people's opinions. Sometimes we need to step back from all of it, take a break from it. 
We need to be calm and peaceful. We need to concentrate ourselves on God so that we can find clarity and see what it is that God wants us to see. Last week, I listened to someone on a rant about having to wear masks and how it's their right to not wear a mask, and it annoyed me tremendously. They would not consider any of the arguments that I made in favor of masks. They brushed them off. You know, I don't wear a mask for myself. I wear it for everyone that I meet. To me, right now, not wearing a mask is an act of incredible selfishness. It's making the whole pandemic about you. But as I listened to the rant, the saying came into my mind, there are none so blind as those who will not see. There are a lot of people in our world right now who simply refuse to see. They choose a particular path and will not look to the left or to the right as they travel along it. They have blinders on. They will not listen. They will not consider changing. They are blind to all of life's possibilities. They are choosing their blindness. And many are choosing to be blind to the leading of God and the Holy Spirit. Why would anyone choose to be blind? I watched my father's suffering. Yes, it was really suffering because he could not see. So why would anybody choose blindness? And, and yet, all around us, every day, there are people choosing to travel through life blindly. We live in a world in which the leading of God and the Holy Spirit is viewed as a particular kind of chosen blindness. And we in the church have listened to society's criticism and accepted it and have tried to adapt to society's expectations of us. But it's time for us to stop worrying about what other people think and start worrying about being true to our commitment to God and to his church. We need to stop choosing the blindness our society and our culture would impose upon us and instead choose to open our eyes and follow our God. I have tried in my life to let the Holy Spirit lead the way. I have tried very hard to be open at all times to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And life has always gone better for me when I have listened to the Spirit. It led me to Knox College and to becoming a minister. It led me to Geraldton and to a good life there. It led me to my husband. It led me to Forrest and all of the exciting opportunities and friendships that I have found here. Sometimes it's hard to see where the Holy Spirit is actually taking you. The path isn't always all that clear. It's really easy in those times to, to hang back and not move forward. But these are the very times when we have to just trust in the Holy Spirit. Trust that God is taking us in the right direction for our lives. My car has a function that always surprises me still after two years. My side mirror when I'm driving has a light that lights up when another vehicle is in my blind spot. And it got me thinking, maybe there are times when I'm, I'm not blind, when I can see pretty much all around me, except that I have a blind spot somewhere over here. I know some very intelligent people with some very big blind spots. There are none so blind as those who will not see. That saying actually comes from the prophet Jeremiah who said, listen you foolish, senseless people, with eyes that do not see and ears that do not hear. You know, I may not even always understand that I have blind spots, because that's what a blind spot is, isn't it? When you can't see something and you don't even know that you can't see it. And although we all know that cars have blind spots, we don't always understand that we have blind spots. And that's why there's a function in cars to help us with our blind spots. There are a few things in our world right now that can help with our blind spots in our lives. 
There are friends and family who are sometimes all too happy to point out to us our wrong thinking or our inability to see. There are TV shows and talk shows, online programs that will help us to see. There are therapists and books and music that can serve to open our eyes. And there is the church whose task is to be prophetic and call our society and one another to account for our blind spots. But more than anything else, there is the Holy Spirit whose sole function is to help us see the path that God wants for us, to open our eyes to God, to sound the alarm when we are in a blind spot. Jesus said to the people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain true to my teachings, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We need to choose Jesus right now to let him wipe our eyes and clear them so that we can see the truth, live the truth, and live free. in our prayers. Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, we offer our prayers to you for today for our church here in Forest, that your Holy Spirit may inspire our worship and lead us into deeper fellowship, that we may continue to pass on our faith, hope, and love from generation to generation, that we may serve the community in which we live with commitment vision and enthusiasm that within our fellowship there may be found comfort for the sorrowful strength for the anxious compassion for the sick and concern and love for all people we pray for the leadership of this church for all who hold positions of responsibility in worship teaching music caring or administration and for each member with each one of their particular gifts that together we may fulfill our calling to eagerly conscientiously and with imagination strengthened by your spirit and upheld by one another's prayers we pray for those for whom we are particularly concerned those who are ill at home or in the hospital those who are housebound or unable to get to church, those who are bereaved or face losing someone they love, those who are worried or depressed, and for those who no longer come to church, that they may be drawn back into our fellowship. Lord, we thank you for the lives of your faithful people in every age and especially for the members of this community who have been witnesses to your love. We, with them and the living stones with which you built your church, we pray that we too may remain faithful to our calling as did your Son, Jesus Christ, that by your grace our lives may be examples on which those after us may build to your power and your praise and your glory. And now we pray in the prayer that Jesus taught to us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God's word be in your heart, 
May God's words be on your lips. May God's word be in your touch. May God's word direct your feet. And on this day and all of your days that lie ahead, may God's word be in the life you live. Go now with your eyes wide open and seeing and tell the, the story of Jesus to the world. Amen.